So last little bit is about talking about your language of proof. So these are just like a table summarizing all the different languages. I won't read them out to you because I'm sure you understand all the different types of languages. But essentially the different ideas is that you can negate things and the idea is in order to prove something you need a premise and conclusion. So you need to assume something is true and then you're going to get something from that conclusion. There's a lot of different quantifiers. So there's the for all and there exists, which are our two main ones. And it kind of depends on which order it is in, whether it wants you to prove it as true or whether it wants you to prove it as not true. The idea of contrapositive is really important because we have a idea of proof by contrapositive. And we also have, so it's kind of like converse contrapositive. And then you also have like a negation type thing. So each of those sound like the same thing, but essentially what it is is they're both all quite different the negation is the exact opposite of what's happening the converse is just switching the order of the two statements and the contrapositive is an equivalent statement cool all right so let's do some direct the, all the different proofing techniques so if you have n cubed if n is even essentially you don't need any fancy skills for this but handy skills is to know what to represent as even what to represent as odd so if it's even we can let n equal to 2k where k belongs to z and therefore what we can do here is we can say that n cubed will equal to 2k all cubed right and 2k all cubed is just going to be equivalent to 8k cubed so n cubed equals to 8k cubed right so then we can make n cubed equivalent to 2 4k cubed so therefore, n cubed is even if n is even. Cool. All right. So proof by cases is the same thing, but you essentially just have it div in little bits. So if prove that if n squared is not divisible, so prove that n squared is not divisible by 3 if n is not divisible by 3. So we have a couple of cases for n not being divisible by 3. So n could equal to 2k plus 1 or n could equal to 2k plus 2. So in terms of this, n squared would equal to 4k squared plus 4k plus 1, right? So if we kind of tried to pretend that was, tried to make that all equivalent to 3 or just try and get rid of that bit, you know, uh, we can kind of see that regardless of what we're working with, we'll see that, you know, it's never going to be divisible by 3 because these 4Ks, if we put in maybe, we could even, like, change this so it was instead kind of dealing with the 3s instead. So we can say, you know, it's 3, then we can have K squared plus K, and then we'll have left over, you know, K squared plus K plus 1. Um, and you can even actually group it like this as well. So if we get a bit of a rubber. So if we, we can also group it. So you can um, essentially say that if you put this into like, kind of put it into the, like make everything in terms of threes instead of like putting it like this so you make all of this in terms of three you could even say that this is going to be equivalent to uh three you know k k plus oh sorry this should be three k plus one i should realize that um three k plus one and three k plus two i was thinking of different things three k plus one three k plus two so that means that you can do up here 9k squared plus 6k plus 1 so you can group the 3 of the outside so you get 3k squared plus 2k plus 1 or n squared will equal to 3 of 9k squared plus 12k plus 4 so you can group the 3 once again so you can have 3k squared plus you can leave the 4 out to the back honestly but also you can group it in so 4k plus 1 plus 1 so therefore not if n is not divisible by 3 n squared is not divisible by 3 and I like to just restate the conclusion at the end because it just makes it really clear that we've proven it 
all right so prove that root 2 is irrational so this is a proof by contradiction so what essentially the idea is is you assume this is true and then you're going to get to a contradictory statement so assume root 2 is rational so what that means is root 2 will equal to p over q where p and q belong to z so therefore root 2 q will equal to p and therefore 2q will equal to p squared so therefore p squared is even and we can do the proof that if p squared is even p squared is even p is even so that's essentially just taken from the a proof by contrapositive so we can do that so a proof by contrapositive the contrapositive statement is p is odd if p so p if p is odd then p squared is odd so we can say is p equals to 2k plus 1 so p squared would equal to 4k squared plus 4k plus 1 so we'll get that this is 2 2k squared plus 2k plus 1 so you can see that it would be odd as well so we kind of proven that so we can say p will let's e let that equal to say 2l so therefore we'll have 2q will equal to 4l squared so q will equal to q squared sorry q squared will equal to 2l squared so therefore q squared is even and q is even but then you have a contradiction because now you're saying both is even so therefore root 2 must be irrational as p and q cannot share factors cool all right so proof by contrapositive we just saw this exact statement so essentially it's just switching the two statements and negating both and that is equivalent to the original statement all right last one down here is proof by mathematical induction uh, fan favorite because it's very structured so essentially you prove the base case and then you prove the general case is true and then you do the induction step so we can do these in this type of step so we essentially let this pn equal to this and so p1 will be equivalent to left hand side will be equivalent to 1 and right hand side will be equivalent to 1 over 2 1 plus 1 which is equivalent to 1 so right hand side equals to left hand side so p1 is true all right so then assume pk is true and that just essentially means that this whole statement if k was there would be true so therefore we need to explore pk plus one so pk plus one would equal one plus two plus three dot 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 until n minus two and plus so n minus 1, n minus 2, I think that should be in the other way around probably, n minus 2 and then n minus 1, n minus 1 and then plus n. Um, so essentially we'll, we'll go with n minus 1 and then plus until it gets to n and then n plus 1, right? So our goal is to get this to k plus 1 plus 1. So what we can do here is we want this to be k, 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 and k. So all of this is going to condense just down to using our pk type thing. It's, it's going to condense to n over 2, n plus 1, mm. plus n plus 1. So if we kind of just essentially group it, right, we'll, all we'll get here is that we'll get that this is going to be n plus 1. And then we'll, we'll be able to group this into the function so that we can kind of condense it a little bit. So what we'll get here is we'll be able to condense this to n plus 1, right? Will be 1 plus n over 2, right? So we'll be able to get that this part is going to be... Let's rub this, let's rub this out so we have a bit more space on our slide. So we know that P1, we already proved that P1 is true. And so this this comes from our, we'll be very familiar because it just essentially comes from our sequence formula. 
which is essentially n over 2 is 2a plus n minus 1d. So if we kind of look at here, right, we'll put sub in the 2, so we'll get 2 here, and then our d is essentially just 1. So if we put that into there, we'll just get that this is going to be 2 plus n minus 1, which is just going to be n plus 1. So if we kind of substitute in this into this formula, we'll get that that p k plus 1 would have been equivalent to 1 plus 2 plus 3 dot 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 until n plus n plus 1, right? And we kind of just said how this all this this thing from before was going to be equivalent to just our p k, so equivalent to our right hand side of our p k. So what we will get here is, like we said before, so pk will just equal to n over 2, n plus 1, and then we'll have plus n plus 1 at the end. And remember, our goal is to get to n plus 1 over 2, right, plus, or n plus 1 over 2 times our n plus 2 overall. So we can kind of expand this. So we can have n squared plus n over 2 plus n plus 1 and then we can kind of move this across so we'll have that this is going to be n squared plus n plus 2n plus 2 over 2 right all equal to our pk which is going to condense to pk is equivalent to n squared plus 3n plus 2 over 2 which we can also rewrite as happiness n plus 1 over 2 n plus 2 as required. So therefore we can say that therefore pk plus 1 is true and p1 is true so therefore your pn is true.